So you finally saved enough gems to roll for the exclusive crossover unit that is 2B. And unlike me, you are smart enough to not waste $60 on a skin. And now you want her to be the best at what she does, and nothing will stop you. Well, don't worry. My name is Psyche, and today I'm going to be going over from a late game player's perspective on how you can efficiently build 2B as a powerhouse of a unit, including going over skill level link priorities, overload gear attributes, as well as the best teams for this wandering android. 2B is an assault rifle user with a whopping 90 ammo in one mag and a reload time of one second. Unfortunately, she suffers from a low attack multiplier. She is a defender type unit surprisingly, meaning she will innately have high HP but low attack. The first passive skill will indefinitely increase 2B's HP for the remainder of the encounter every second her burst is used with a maximum of plus 57% when activated three times. It's worth mentioning that this passive specifically only triggers when 2B's burst skill is used, not anyone else's. Meaning in order to gain max efficiency, you will have to enter full burst for a minimum of five times, activating 2B's burst first, then alternating between another type 3's. This means she can have a maximum of around 88% bonus health this way. This, of course, is leading people to think that 2B specializes in longer, drawn-out fights. 2B's second skill has two components. The first will deal damage to all enemies after 300 bullets have been fired, which is just over 3 reloads, assuming you don't have any buffs to increase mag size, or about every 25 seconds, according to Nikkei.gg. The second portion is a constant buff to 2B's attack based on her max HP, so it synergizes perfectly with the first skill. It's worth mentioning that the skill description reads final max HP. The difference between final and non-final is that final will include any buffs that come from your overload gear attributes as well as any buffs you receive during a battle. In other words, it's dynamic and could change constantly. A non-final stat is only calculated based on the unit's base stats, so it will not include changes from overload gear, attributes, and buffs given by other units. Finally, the burst ability is a major source of 2B's overall damage. She will deal distributed damage to all enemies upon cast. It's worth mentioning that the term distributed means that damage will be dealt based on 2B's attack stat that's split equally among all enemies. So let's assume that after all the calculation has been done, 2B has a final attack of 100. In reality, this is going to be much bigger, but let's play pretend. If she bursts while only one enemy is on the field, she will deal the entire 100 damage to that enemy. If there are 3 enemies, each enemy will be dealt 33 points of damage. If there are 5 enemies, then 20 damage each. This is kinda like a pseudo AoE effect, though I would say it's way better in bosses or when there's only one target, given that you might overkill an enemy and waste some excess damage when it could have been gone to something else. Not that mob clearing levels are typically drawn out anyways. Now, one last caveat that I don't think a lot of people know. Based on the guide on Nikkei.gg, something interesting about how skill 1 and the burst interacts is that the damage from the burst will trigger before skill 1 activates. Meaning that in order to fully benefit from all 3 HP bonus stacks, you actually have to use 2B's burst for a total of 4 times. So the wording on the skill 1 can be a little confusing. When it says using burst skill, it in actuality means after the skill button has been pressed and after the damage from said burst has gone through. Meaning that on 2B's third burst, you would think that she would benefit from having all three HP bonuses. She actually only benefits from two. The damage triggers first and then the third stack will activate. Let's talk about prioritizing which talent to level first. I'm going to give recommendations based on three tiers of priority. Low means that you can just leave the skill at level 1 or bump it to 4. Medium means you should try to level it to around 7, but can be pushed higher if you want. And high means the skill should ideally be leveled higher than a 7 or even maxed out. Skill 1 gets low priority. I think the HP buffs are nice, but HP is useless if you can't convert them into attack, which is where the second skill comes in. Skill 2 gets high priority. This is where the magic happens, as 2B's final max HP will be converted to attack. The higher the level, the higher this conversion gets. So try to push this as high as you can. Some people even suggesting that you max it out. Skill 3 gets medium priority. The skill is where a major chunk of 2B's damage, so it never hurts to have it leveled. I would say skill 2 still gets a larger preference from me, but a level 7 skill is quite nice to have. 
Now we move on to gearing. Since 2B has innately low attack, and any attack buffs, as far as I know, are percentage-based, it's not actually efficient to pair her with attack buffers or attack percent overload attributes. Instead, she can benefit from having more HP, crit rate, or crit damage. For late-game overload gear users, I will prioritize leveling the body piece, as it gives the most amount of HP, then the gloves, the helmet, and the boots. For overload attributes, you'll want preferably get crit rate and crit damage. Elemental damage can be good, but it's situational, and while attack is at least something compared to nothing, unlike a lot of the meta characters in the game, she does not benefit very well from having more attack buffs. Hit rate and max ammo are also quite nice to have, but not needed in large quantities. For the enhancement cube, I will go with the Bastion cube since it refunds ammo. Given 2B's enormous magazine size, you can get a lot of mileage out of this one. Now we move on to teams, and it's one of the reasons why I think 2B is such a nice addition to the game. Given that she does not benefit well from attack buffers, you actually want to use buffers of other certain stats. One of the premier underdogs in this department is Mast, who did not see much play prior to this collab's release. But given that Mast pretty much gives every buff imaginable that 2B would want, HP and crit, you definitely want to pair them together if you have them. Another solid teammate is Noise, as she also gives max HP. Some other notable teammates include Novel for the good debuffs for drawn out boss fights, and Quincy who buffs HP and is technically a free to play unit that you will get eventually. A good team core looks something like this. Using Noise and Mast as type 1 and 2, you can use 2B and 2 other flex units. Another Type 3 and a Type 1 due to Noise's 40 second cooldown. Ideally, you'll want a character with cooldown reduction so that 2B can burst faster and get to her optimal state quicker. Since I don't have mass, I'm settling with a Noise and Novel setup, with a DPS unit of your choice and a cooldown reduction character. This team performs very well in certain boss fights that are drawn out, and assuming that the level lasts long enough, when 2B starts to pop off, she can compete with some of the best DPSs in the game. And obviously, just know that 2B is not good in every single kind of level. For campaign levels, as well as some bosses that are considered DPS races, you might not be able to burst three times and reach 2B's optimal state, which means it will in turn lower your overall DPS. Nier Automata has one of my favorite video game stories, has given me an existential crisis, and is my number one favorite video game soundtrack of all time. It's no surprise that 2B has been a highly anticipated and popular unit to be added into Nike, and it is to my pleasure to say that she is a very solid unit. From what I've seen, her unique mechanic of scaling with HP definitely has some interesting implications, and demands you to build a team with very specific buffs to make her work effectively. She fits into a niche where she excels in a drawn-out boss encounter, and given that she uses fringe allies like Mast, it will allow you to reserve your meta units for other teams in raid events. As such, she will receive a 4 out of 5 rating from me. When the right circumstances and the team requirements are met, Tubi is able to match or even out DPS some of the best damage dealers in the game. She's one of those units where you'll definitely do need some decent investments into the skill levels, but once you have them, she is a premier unit to bring into long encounters, especially for those upcoming union raids. Thank you for tuning in to this unit analysis and guide. I hope to put out a guide for A2 once some early analysis on her has been released. If you enjoy Nikkei content just like this one, be sure to subscribe. Thank you for watching, and always remember, have fun with the game.